What's going on YouTube OCD for EDC here and what I've got for your face balls today uh, We're gonna be talking about how I'm a dumbass <laughs> And uh, we're also gonna be talking about some other cool stuff But first before we get into that, I'm not actually gonna open this package, but I just wanted to show you guys something um, This is the effect my wife has uh, So this package was sent uh, by Ben over at Jack Wolf Knives uh, super cool guy Ben and I have uh, you know kind of uh, sparked off a friendship here uh, in the last few weeks um, and yeah we get along really great and so yeah thank you for uh, uh, you know being a cool guy Ben I appreciate it uh, but you know he's got some really awesome stuff going on over at Jack Wolf Knives but my wife if you guys were in on the live stream uh, last Sunday my wife gave Ben a guilt trip for not sending her a badass Jack Wolf t-shirt like he sent me. And so he went ahead and sent this. And instead of just sending it to OCD for EDC, he sent it to Molly the Great One. So <laughs> it it uh, certainly made me laugh last night. I've, I've been out of town all week uh, for work. And so I just got home late last night and I picked this up from the post office. And as soon as I saw it, I just started cracking up. Uh, but we're going to let Molly open this package. And, uh, so we'll do that, uh, either on the lot. Yeah, probably on the live stream, I guess. I'm not really sure, but, uh, but anyway, we'll let her open that one up anyway. Um, uh, one of the things that I want to get into, uh, right off the top here is how I'm a dumbass. And I'm just going to grab a couple of these. So here's four, uh, two sons. And let's just, uh, let's just see what we got going on here. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, these two sons. I don't even know which ones these are. Although we do have the boxes marked. I just didn't pay any attention before I grabbed them. Um, so these are the four that I grabbed. And... What we've got going on here is I screwed up, um, and so this is this is totally on me. Uh, but so Molly put these up on the website, and so uh, real quick here, uh, here's the little uh, flashlight. I don't remember what the number on this thing is. Um, of course, I've screwed up the boxes now. Uh, the TS LED 03. Uh, it doesn't come with the battery, but I threw in. Uh, a uh, triple uh, triple a uh, lithium uh, cell but full titanium cool little light uh, anyway the point here is is that uh, getting this up and rolling uh, this Tucson uh, dealership it has been a little bit of a disaster um, and when we first placed the original order uh, we were overcharged uh, for the original order and so there was a little bit of a mess um, and a bunch of you know emails going back and forth and all kinds of stuff uh, here's the 313 the button lock uh, this thing's an m390 awesome knife uh, anyway the point is is that once we actually received the order and I went through and checked them all out. Everything was good. And then I handed, I printed off uh, one of the emails that listed all the pricing on it. Uh, but I didn't pay any attention to it. And it was the first email. Uh, it was the email where we got overcharged. Now, uh, I will say, you know, they refunded uh, our money. Uh, so that was fantastic. And, and you know, it was just a misunderstanding uh, in the beginning. But so I wanted to say that the pricing that went up on our website originally was incorrect. Uh, now, like I said, I've been gone all week and I never went and looked, you know, had I went and looked at the listings, I would have recognized. Uh, but, you know, Molly doesn't know the pricing of these things. And so she just went what, with what was on the paper and that was incorrect. Uh, so I went through today and corrected all the pricing. So all the pricing on the Tucson knives uh, that are up on the website currently we still have some more that need to be put up on the website, but moving forward, they will all be correct. They are correct now. And everyone that purchased a Tucson knife from us in the last you know, week, uh, they have already gotten a refund. So uh, we did overcharge uh, you know, all the people that purchased one. Uh, like I said, they've already received a refund um, and we've already you know, reached out to them, sent them messages and all that stuff. Uh, so that's already done, uh, but I just wanted to let you guys know that uh, the incorrect pricing went up 
and it's 100% my fault. It was just a bunch of confusion, and I didn't pay any attention to it. I just handed her the list of numbers and said, go put these on the website. Uh, but we do have all of them in stock. Uh, so anything that you see on our website, we do have in stock. It's ready to ship right now. Um, so the other thing I wanted to address is that you can find listings on other websites, um, you know, places like White Mountain Knives and Amazon and different places for some of these knives. And they're, some of those prices might be cheaper than what we have listed on our website. Uh, the difference is, is they don't have them in stock. Uh, so, uh, you know, just because there's a listing out there that shows, uh, you know, this particular Tucson model for this dollar amount, uh, that's not actually a real listing uh, unless you can actually purchase it. So I know for a fact that some of the listings are just incorrect. They show the incorrect blade steel for the incorrect price. Um, so anyway... I just wanted to, you know, clarify that, um, and and so all the pricing that's on our website today is correct. Uh, so you know, and like I said, anybody that purchased a Tucson knife from us, um, they have already been refunded the money. Um, so there's no reason, you know, you don't need to reach out to us or anything like that because it's already been taken care of. Uh, but there are some, you know, listings, and I'm not. I'm not, you know, disparaging those listings or anything like that. I'm just saying, you know, the information, well, just like with me, they may have been over or undercharged or told the wrong price uh, and then made the listing and didn't actually have the knife to even sell it. Uh, so a lot of those, you know, especially on White Mountain Knives, they have a ton of two sons listed, but they don't have any to sell. Um, and <clears throat> so those prices are not accurate. And, uh, but anyway, the prices on our website are accurate as of today. So when, by the time you see this video, uh, the prices have already been all changed. And so if there's anything that you want, go buy it up and, uh, everything should be good moving forward. And if, just so you're aware, any, any two sons that you see on our website, any knives, uh, that you see on our website, um, that means that we have them in stock. If we do not, if they're not up on our website, uh, then we don't have them. If they are on the website, then we have them in stock in our possession and they're ready to ship. So anyway, that's, uh, that's what I've got to say about that. So I apologize for any confusion. Uh, I'll just leave these uh, set out here just because, you know, they're pretty and stuff. So let's move this stuff off to the side. All right. Now I'm going to open up this package. I don't know what's in here. Uh, the little unboxing knife we're gonna use is the uh, Benchmade Onslaught. Now, I've been carrying this thing uh, for a handful of days. It's pretty sweet. I dig it. Um, action on it is just absolutely stellar. And we're gonna talk about this knife in just a moment. But first, I'm gonna use it to open up this package. And let's see what we can do here. Now, uh, one of the things that definitely needs to happen to this knife is it needs to be sharpened. Uh, the Benchmade Onslaught is, yeah, definitely needs some, uh, we need some alone time on the stones, if you know what I mean. Because it, yeah, it's dull. <laughs> We're just gonna say that. All right, so maybe I'll do a video on that. Uh, you know, I get asked a, a lot to uh, show how I sharpen knives and what have you. Okay, so we've got some parts and pieces here. I'm not sure what this is exactly. Oh, you know what? I bet I do know what this is. Hold on a moment. Let's see what we got. See if we can tell from the part. That's a, that, those, those there be Mannix parts if I ever did see them. So let's move this stuff out of the way. See what we're working with here. I feel like this is a blade. Nope, it's a scale. So that is a titanium, uh, flytanium scale. There are the liners and backspacer, or not backspacer, but lanyard tube for a Manix 2. 
here is the other scale for said Mannix. And we got a rubber band. And we have a blade wrapped up in a little uh, cloth here. Beautiful. What blade steel we got? M390. Well, M390, Manix 2. So for those that don't know, uh, the Manix 2, one of my all-time favorite knives. And, okay, so uh, this knife was sent to me. So first and foremost, got a bunch of parts here. Uh, and this knife was sent to me uh, by a viewer who was having issues uh, getting this thing put together. Um, so these are flitanium, uh, titanium scales, and he was having problems. And so I told him that I would assemble this knife for him. Okay. All right. Okay, I think we got everything we need here. So let's just, uh, you know, let's get into it. And we'll see what we can do here real quick. Now, I'm not sure exactly what the issue he was having was. Uh, if it might have been this issue right here that he couldn't get this in this, yeah, that uh, lanyard tube. You know what? I think what I'll do here is I will make a video on this, um, but I'm going to have to get some other tools involved. Uh, and I will show how to install these scales uh, on this knife. And you know what? We're just going to go ahead and use this box for a few moments just to hold on to all this hardware so I don't lose it because that would be a bummer. All right. And then I will do a video of how uh, to uh, install this and get that lanyard tube uh, to fit those scales. Like I said, it's gonna, gonna require some tools that I don't have uh, right here available. Um, but uh, we will show that off and so the problem here is is that these uh, lanyard tubes uh, are flared out at the end and they do that to grip onto the g10 uh, from the original scales and so i'll show how to make all of that work uh, in a, an upcoming video here uh, very very soon so let's move this off to the side for right now okay now, let's get into uh, the Benchmade Onslaught. Uh, super, super cool knife, and I'm loving this thing. And I'm gonna tell you why that I love this knife. Uh, for multiple reasons, the action on this thing is just fantastic. I mean, it's everything that you want a, a wonderful axis lock to be. Uh, it's, you couldn't ask for smoother action absolutely zero blade play at all now this is a big boy uh, the original onslaught uh, like i said i think i said this in a in a previous video but i'm from what i can tell this knife was made between like 2010 to 2013 um and this is the 741 uh bench made 741 they did make a 746 uh which is a uh, the mini variant of this knife. Now, I think the 746 has like a three and a half inch blade. You can see right here, this one's 4.312 inches. So big old blade on this thing. Uh, it's rocking 154 cm. You got a spidey hole and you know, you got to love the poon. Uh, you got the poon and the poon gooch and it's beautiful. Uh, in hand, this thing is fantastic. Uh, it has contoured scales, uh, really cool. You've got this kind of fuller here on the front. It's not super functional. It doesn't really do a whole lot. Um, Left-handed, it works well because it gives your fingers a place to kind of really grip onto. 
uh, which is nice. Uh, there is no jimping around the handle on this knife at all. The backspacer does sit proud of the scales uh, ever so slightly. Uh, black G10, but really, really nice G10. Uh, the pocket clip is a little bit of a beast, but it functions extremely well. And this knife overall is just really comfortable in hand. You do have this kind of turned down area, but in this grip, it's fantastic. You can choke back on it, so you can really, you know, do some whacking. Uh, that works well. The pocket clip is tight to the handle. Even in left hand, it's great. Uh, Right-handed, the pocket clip just kind of disappears in your hand because it's down in this area. Um, it's, it's a great design all the way around. And I love the blade shape. Just, I love the look of the whole knife. Uh, it's a really, really cool knife. But one of the things that I really love about this thing you got 4.3 inches of blade. Now, let me, I'm gonna grab another knife here. All right, so I got a couple other knives over here and uh, we're gonna talk about a thing or nine, uh, maybe seven, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, but, so here is the Benchmade full-size Adamus. Here is the Hinderer uh, Fire Tack. And here is the uh, F5.5. So, <clears throat> the reason that I bring these knives out is I just want to show you uh, something here. So, on this little guy, we've got this little uh, sheep's foot style blade. So we don't have, you know, a very a real pointy tip just because of the design of the blade. Uh, and the blade length here is 2.855 inches, 2.854 inches. Um, so I think we can all agree that's a relatively short blade. Um, and just because of its design, we don't have uh, a very you know thinned out tip. Um, we have 158 thousandths uh, blade stock on this little bitty, uh, you know, little chode knife here. On the fire tack, we have got blades uh, blade length of three and a half inches and we have a blade stock thickness of a hundred hundred and thirty eight thousandths um, so and then on the full size Adamus uh, we have a blade length 3.75 inches so three and three quarter and a blade stock thickness of 140 thousandths so, so these two are roughly, uh, you know, are both right at 140 thousandths blade stock. This is 138, 140. Uh, this was over that at 150, what was it, 157, 157 thousandths. And now these are all markedly smaller uh, than this. The Onslaught has a blade stock of 118 thousandths. And then once you get out in front of the hole, the thickest part of the blade actually gets a little wider right there, 106 thousandths. Come down here, the thickest part, 80 thousandths. And then you get all the way out here at the tip, you know, roughly, uh, we're 25 thousandths about right there. Um, but behind the edge thickness on this guy is, 12 thousandths, uh, you know, or, or I'm going to call it 10 to 12 thousandths. It, it varies a little bit around uh, the belly of the knife. Um, and this is a 4.3 inch blade, 154 cm. So we're not talking about, you know, any sort of crazy. I mean, 154 cm is a great blade steel, but it's nothing, you know, crazy. And, uh, you know, it's not known for its incredible toughness or anything like that. But here we have a 4.3 inch blade. Now, could you break the tip of this blade off? Of course, absolutely. If you uh, use the knife uh, as it, you know, not as intended. Uh, you know, this is a cutting instrument, it's a cutting tool, and it has amazing geometry. You've got this swedge across the top, so it is a very high flat grind. Uh, but the swedge, you know, allows that uh, material, you know, at its widest point is a very small area. Uh, and then, you know, it's very thin behind the edge. 
and I'm just super pumped on this knife all the way around. I mean, the the blade geometry here is fantastic. 4.3 inches in length, so it's, you know, certainly, I mean, this thing's, you know, definitely a hoss. There's no doubt about it. But because the blade is, is relatively thin, it makes the whole knife much lighter. Now, this thing does have uh, some weight relieving uh, to it. So let's... Uh, I'll show that to you real quick. We'll go ahead and just pull the pivot screw. And this is a T10 uh, pivot screw. And then the rest of the body screws are all T6, which is kind of a bummer because, you know, T6 uh, hardware, you know, it's got a, it's got a shelf life, <laughs> you know, even, even, a well-made hardware t6 is they're just so small um so i would have much rather seen you know t8 uh, screws especially when you got this much real estate to work with like you know t8 hardware would have been just fine on this knife um but this is what benchmade chose to to work with so let's see if we can lift that off there okay so you can see we've got full liners here but we've got large, very large holes uh, throughout these uh, stainless steel liners. Uh, the backspacer is G10, the scales are full G10. And so what you've got here is a knife that is, and you can see the holes are on both sides. You can see the G10 underneath there. Um, <clears throat> a knife that is, is really you know, quite large for a, a folding pocket knife, uh, but is done in a way that makes it reasonable to carry uh, not just uh, uh, you know the size of it uh, and the thickness and whatnot but the weight is also uh, you know it's still you know obviously it's heavier than a benchmade bug out you know but but it's still reasonable and and that's one of the things that i absolutely love about this knife this knife was designed uh, extremely well the and was executed extremely well benchmade did a fantastic job with this thing all the way around and i'm really pumped to have it uh, and this was a knife that i traded for um and so the guy that i did the trade with you know you know who you are and uh yeah i hope you you know enjoy the knife that you received as well um because i definitely am enjoying this thing and it's just a knife that I didn't have in my collection. Um, and it was one that I had never handled before. Um, and I, you know, remember seeing it, but I honestly, I, I didn't remember um, the, the full size one. I remembered the, the mini, um, but this full size variant is just super cool. And of course, True to form, I over tighten the pivot as always. This is like a story of my life. Oh yeah, yeah, this thing is so cool. So anyway, I'll probably do a sharpening video with this blade, uh, just because I I think I'll be able to show you guys you know good shots of the edge. We'll break the the microscope out and I'll you know show a few different things uh, what you what to look for and all that sort of stuff. And so I feel like this will be a good one to uh, to show off, and, and it definitely needs an edge put on it. So anyway, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that. You know, quick little look at the uh, Benchmade Onslaught and kind of its features and what it's bringing to the table. Um, you know, we've got Fat Chode here. If you guys can, uh, here. And th don't get me wrong, like this is a cool knife. It's just got, I mean, look at the difference in blade stock there. And just why? Like, why does it need to be that heavy? It makes this thing nose heavy uh, by by quite a bit. Like, the, the balance point on this knife um, is right next to the pivot. Uh, so, you know, generally you kind of want that balance point to be right in that, that choil area. And you can see here, if I let that go, it's going to fall. Um, it's just a really heavy blade uh, for, a, you know, what is a very, very small little knife. Uh, now, they probably did some of that to get, uh, you know, little drop shut action going on there because you do have a relatively short blade and getting some weight out on there, you know, just makes it easier to uh, 
have the the drop shut action but <clears throat> this guy right here shows that uh, you do not need really thick blade stock um, you know just functionally speaking you you know like I said if you use it as a pry bar are you gonna break the tip off probably <laughs> but it's not meant to be a pry bar so anyway guys uh, hopefully you enjoyed that again on the Tucson stuff everything's been corrected there uh, so I greatly apologize uh, for any confusion or anything. Uh, a few people did send us uh, or sent some emails to Molly. Like I said, I was gone this week, so I wasn't uh, uh, checking in on that stuff. But she told me about it. And so uh, once I realized what I had done, uh, like I said, I got it corrected. It's fixed now. And uh, so, yeah, should be good. So I apologize about that. And, uh, yeah, hopefully everybody's having a wonderful day. And we will catch you next time. Peace.